Thanks for checking us out today. I'm Deuce. I'm Demonic. I'm Prodigy. Today we're going to be covering Batman Arkham Origins, Lego Marvel, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, Battlefield 4, and Call of Duty Ghost. Today we're going to have our master debaters go over the difference and comparisons between Battlefield 4 and Call of Duty Ghosts. How did the gameplay feel? The gameplay was really smooth. It was just like all the other Batman games, basically. It was the same controls, same mechanics, had the free flow fighting style still, and it still felt really good. They threw in some new enemies that made it a little more challenging, like there's martial artists and they actually counter a lot more than any of the other enemies. Give us a little, uh, a little backstory, what, what this title is about. Actually, uh, Batman Arkham Origins is a prequel to the other Batman video games, and in Batman Arkham Origins, Black Mask has set a bounty on Batman's head for $50 million on one night, which is Christmas Eve, to kill Batman, and uh, there are multiple assassins throughout the city looking for Batman, trying to collect that bounty. Tell me a little bit about the graphics in the game. Has it, has it gotten better from the other Batmans? I think with uh, Warner Brothers Montreal taking over for Batman Arkham Origins where Rocksteady had the games before they kinda just took what Rocksteady had and just added a new story to it they just didn't add too much of their own to the game itself they just kept with what was already there what are your uh, final thoughts on this game and you know maybe you could tell the other viewers out there that are watching right now about how you feel about this game I definitely wish that they would have added a little bit more to the gameplay itself. I mean, they did a great job with the story and telling their own story and bringing back that background to all the other games, but I really had wished that they had added more components to the game itself. They actually took out some of the stuff, like the Riddler, the riddles from the Riddler, they were no longer there, which I really had fun doing in the other ones, but they weren't here, so that's something I really missed about it. And I actually gave this game a 8.25 out of 10. I thought it was a really good game. It just fell short in a couple areas and just piggybacked off the other ones, I thought. What was the story about, or how did you feel about the story? Um, the story in this one is about Silver Surfer coming to Earth. And he brings this ominous presence with him, which all Marvel, character, or, excuse me, all Marvel fans know that it's Galactus. Um, as soon as he gets to Earth, you see here in the video that his board is destroyed. It's broken up into a bunch of cosmic bricks. And these cosmic bricks uh, cause Dr. Doom to try and collect them, and he wants to build his Dr. Doom's Death Ray of Doom. Uh, at that point, Nick Fury gets S.H.I.E.L.D. together, gets all the Avengers together, and from then you just see all these... Uh, superheroes and villains from the Marvel Universe just intertwining this cool story. What do you think um, of another adult playing this game? Do you think they would enjoy the game or do you think it's strictly for a kid's game? I don't think it's strictly for kids. Um, the humor in it, it's tied in. Kids will get it, but there's a lot of uh, undertones in, in the game. Um, you know, and adults that are fans of the Marvel Universe and know the storylines, know how the, the storylines intertwine, uh, will really enjoy this game because the game really sticks to uh, the comic aspect of the Marvel story. And I know there's an endless list of playable characters to this game as well as an open world. What was your favorite character and uh, how did you feel about the open world in this game? The open world sold it for me. Uh, it, to me it's the one of the selling aspects for it. Uh, my favorite character to play by far is Iron Man because uh, you actually can unlock different suits uh, as Iron Man, so you can get unlock the Patriot suit, the War Machine suit, um, the different Mark versions of his suit. Another character, not just Iron Man, but I am a huge fan of Lego, and I know you have to destroy a lot of stuff to collect Lego studs, and the Incredible Hulk. He can destroy a level in record time. So. What about the, the graphics? How do the graphics feel compared to the other Lego games, or... Did it have the same feel? It's kind of a, a, a different feel. Uh, a lot of the 
Lego items, you'll see they're in the video, you can see that they're kind of polished and kind of glossy. But the environments outside of the Lego uh, pieces are very textured and very clean, crisp. And I was amazed at the, uh, the, in the graphics, on, just on the environments. What was your favorite part or your least favorite part of this game? Favorite part would probably be just exploring the open world and just being able to fly around uh, New York City or, you know, using Spider-Man to web swing around New York City. But uh, I, I need to add in my least favorite part is the annoying and monotonous job of collecting Lego studs in each level. Any final thoughts on uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes and uh, what did you give it? Lego Marvel Super Heroes is a great game. I would suggest uh, picking it up for the holiday season if you have children or if you're just a huge Marvel fan. I suggest picking it up. I personally gave it a 9.25 out of 10. Just based on the simple fact that it's Marvel, there's over 150 characters, and it's just great. What was the story about in this game? The story is basically about uh, Edward Kenway. He is a uh, privateer slash pirate. Basically the same plot. You know, you, you become an assassin and you're chasing after the Templars and you're trying to, to uh, you know, ruin their, their plot to, you know, take over the world or whatever. And, but this, this one's just set in the West Indies, or like around the uh, Cuba area, <clears throat> and it's all about pirates, and it's all about, you know, sailing the open seas, and plundering, and looting, and stuff. How is the gameplay with this one, as opposed to all the other ones? With this one, I noticed, um, it's not linear, so you're not, I mean, in the beginning it is kind of linear. Uh, you, you, they force you to do these, you know, certain missions, and then once you do, like, the third or fourth mission, then they just open the world up to you. And it's <clears throat> fairly large, and, uh, you're just sailing the open seas. With the, with the game and the graphics, how, how is this graphics, has it changed or evolved from the other Assassin's Creed's? It's pretty much the same graphics. Um, they had made improvements in details and shading, um, this version that I played is on Xbox 360, so I did notice that it's a bit grainy on the shading aspect of it. Everything else is, is really crisp and clean. Were there any uh, new additions to the game that weren't in all the other ones? You now control your own ship. Um, you, you're a captain, or, you know, Kenway is the captain of the Jackdaw, which is the, the ship that you, you control. Uh, they added aspects of having your own fleet. Um, you're still running around doing collectibles, looting stuff from treasure chests, and doing, um, like, the eagle point of view. Um, yeah, other than that, it's really the small, small changes that they added into the game. So, um, if I were a new gamer to Assassin's Creed, do you think that I should go ahead and start from the very first Assassin's Creed, or do you think I could jump right into uh, Assassin's Creed 4? Well, you have to remember with Assassin's Creed, there's two storylines. So every game has two storylines. You're playing the historical figure, and you're also playing the modern-day version, or the modern-day hero. Um, I don't want to spoil it for the people that have played the other Assassin's Creeds, but uh, with this particular one, Assassin's Creed 4, I believe that you don't need to play the other ones to play this one. Um, it's, it's separate. They tie a few things in there, but it's not like an important part if you don't play the other games. Is there, do you have any other thoughts or anything else you would like to add for our viewers? Um, yeah, I mean, I really, I really enjoy the aspect of the pirates. Uh, this is the best pirate game that I've played since Skies of Arcadia on Dreamcast, which was a while ago. Um. But I love the, the customization, how you can customize your ship, you can customize your cost or your uniform, um, you can recruit people, and it, it's just, it's like a, I don't know, it's just like a good pirate game. I don't, you know, other than the few <clears throat> graphic glitches, the graininess and the shading, it's a good game. It really is. And I, and I played them all. In this one, I've actually 
I suggest definitely go out and, and, and pick this title up. Okay, what did you give it, by the way? So, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, I gave a 9.5 out of 10. How does a single player play on in, in this version? Well, the single player was a little bit dull for myself, in my own opinion. Um, the uh, character that you start off, off with, uh, Wrecker, um, he's a voiceless, faceless marine. Um, and I, I kind of felt like there were some good points in the game. Um, they had a lot of neat action scenes, um, but a lot of it was pretty dull. It kind of made it felt like it was more of a, a, a training situation for you to kind of get yourself familiarized with the maps and, and kind of understand how the game is played so that when you jump into multiplayer, you're not lost and, you know, you're, you're not recognizing the good hiding spots and whatnot for uh, multiplayer, so... What improvements do you feel DICE brought to the table for Battlefield 4 as opposed to Battlefield 3? So, there, there's a whole lot of new things in this Battlefield. Um, one of them that I thought was really interesting was called Levolution. And basically what that is, is um, it's a player-driven action. So, your team's down and you want to go and take out a dam and it can wipe out the other whole team. And if you do it at the right time, it can actually overturn the battle. So... The Levolution is pretty cool. You can take down big skyscrapers, and they have smaller Levolutions, and they have bigger Levolutions. Um, they've also added battle pickups in this one, so if you've played any of the, the other, like, older versions of first-person shooters, there would be, like, a grenade launcher on the ground, and you're able to pick that up and use it besides what you already have in your loadout, um, which is kind of cool. So they have different sight variables now. You can get a uh, red dot scope, and you can get a red dot scope zoom and your character would basically just switch it over into zoom and then you can bring it back out to your regular red dot site. Um, they also have a lot of newer weapons so they have a few other cooler weapons that they brought back from the other Battlefield versions um, other than Battlefield 3 but these newer guns are what the hype was all about with these new weapons so it, it's pretty neat with all the things that they came out with um, Basically, the uh, multiplayer has gotten a lot better from what I've seen in Battlefield 3. How did you feel about the ability to customize your character or your weapons, your loadouts? How did you feel about that? Um, actually, I really like this one. The uh, perks that they have were really good in a sense. You could They have all the classic uh, perks and different support groups. You got your medics and you got your other support groups. Um, the assault and all that thing. My particular one is the assault. I like that a lot. Um, but they also have a lot of different uh, weapon upgrades. And these weapon upgrades are actually improves the game a lot more in multiplayer. Um, as far as the character customization, um, it, it goes into it a little bit, but it's, it's not really as big as some of the other first-person shooters that I've seen in a while. But how did you feel about the graphics for uh, current gen? For the current gen graphics on this game, I felt that the uh, the actual graphics in this game feel exactly the same as the Battlefield 3. It it feels like they haven't really changed much except for the way things are being destructed in the game. The way the buildings collapse and everything. But other than the graphics, I don't think there was much of an improvement on this one. Any final thoughts you want to throw in there? Um... Well, if you're a Battlefield fan, um, definitely pick this game up. I would probably consider it more for the Xbox One or the PS4. So go ahead and pick that game up if you're a Battlefield fan. If you're a Call of Duty fan, you might want to try it, but that's up to you because you're able to use vehicles and that sort of thing and make it more realistic feel. But that's up to you, but I really enjoyed this game. What was your final score on that? And I gave this score an 8.5 out of 10. So what do you think about the story mode of this game? I thought the story for Call of Duty Ghosts was decent. I don't think it stood up to the other stories that Infinity Ward has told in the past with the Modern Warfare series. It did take a while to get into the story and for it to just have me and want, wanting to play it because I just wanted to go play multiplayer, but uh, I did finish the story. And by the end, the end of the story is very well put together. It makes me want to 
already played Ghost 2 just so I can have the story. It was that good of an ending, I believe. So what improvements have they made um, to Call of Duty Ghost? A couple of the uh, most noticeable improvements are the ability to slide with your character. It's very seamless and it's uh, very simple. It's very smooth as, smooth as well. Also, um, they have made it made you able to customize your characters a lot more in detail. So you can go in and it's not just the generic characters that you always see in multiplayer or anything. It's your own specific character. As well as they also put in the ability to lean around corners and shoot around corners so that way you're not exposing your full body while your enemy's right there in front of you. And uh, what are the customizations they add? I knew, I, I heard about that they were going to put in some character customizations. Um, so, what do you, what do you have on that? The things they did for uh, Ghosts, for the multiplayer, is all your weapons are available right away. The only thing is you had to earn points to unlock them. So you don't have to level up and get a specific weapon at a specific time. You can unlock everything from the very beginning as long as you can afford it. So customization was really improved there because you can get exactly what you want when you can afford it. And uh, how do the graphics feel to this game? Do you think they've made some improvements to it from the last Modern Warfare games? I think they, they did. I think they did try to make a few improvements with the graphics, with the lighting and everything which I think they mainly did for the next gen, which is coming out in a couple weeks, which I'm sure will look a lot better than it does in this, but even so, it still looks good here. Let me ask your personal opinion on uh, the fact that for the PS4, Call of Duty will be in 1080p, but for the Xbox One, it will only be in 720 That's yeah, really upsetting, man. I, uh, I'm kind of torn right now because I want to get it on PS4 just so I can play it in 1080p but I do play Call of Duty for the multiplayer and all my friends that I play Call of Duty with are on Xbox and are sticking with the Xbox so it's either switch consoles for my Call of Duty experience to look better or just be able to continue to play with all my friends that I already have online which I'm pretty sure that's what I'm, the route that I'm going to go when I pick it up in a couple weeks so what are your uh, final thoughts on this game? I think you should uh, hold out until it comes out on next gen because it'll look much more stunning. It looks good as it is now, but it'll look really well in a couple weeks on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. I really enjoyed the story once I got into it. The multiplayer is what we've come to expect from Infinity Wars multiplayer. Really smooth and seamless and just a fun time. Cool. So what, what, um, what score did you give us? I gave Call of Duty Ghosts an 8 point master debaters here. Uh, we're now going to do the big debate, Call of Duty Ghosts versus Battlefield 4. We have <laughs> we have Demonic, uh, he's the advocate for Call of Duty Ghosts, and we have Prodigy here, who's advocating for Battlefield 4. Alright, start things off. What makes each game better than the other one? I think uh, Ghost is much better than Battlefield due to the much more fast-paced gameplay. You're not running around as much trying to find somebody. I mean, sometimes, yeah, you do run around can't find anybody, but you're not in this gigantic map looking for somebody unsuccessfully, just roaming around seamlessly. And it's just a lot more fast-paced, and I think it's a lot more fun and uh, challenging. I feel that uh, Battlefield 4 actually... Um they create those large maps um, for strategic team play um, and then also you don't actually have to run through the entire map because you can jump into a player controlled vehicle and get your kills that way um, Battlefield also creates a lot of different things with the vehicle so you could fly you can drive tank so I believe it gives it more of a realistic feel to the game versus Call of Duty where you're simply on an assault on the ground, sniping, that sort of thing, but there's not really any other controls to vehicle gameplay, and there are small maps most of the time. So Battlefield, I think, has an advantage when it comes to the large maps. When you're playing a first-person shooter, what do you want to do? You want to be a first-person shooter. 
You don't want to drive around. You don't want to fly around as much, especially with the controls in Battlefield. I feel when you're trying to fly something, it's just ridiculous. And if I want to fly a helicopter or jet, I'll go play Grand Theft Auto where it's simple and it's fun. As opposed to, I can't turn, can't control this thing very well. But also, they do have a, a, a practice match. It's a practice range, and you can practice your flying. You can practice your driving. You can practice all that, and you can change the controls to your liking to where you're able to practice, because that's all it takes to be a good gamer. You need to practice. Yeah, but I know you, one of your points for Battlefield is you want to get it for the multiplayer. So who wants to go into practice and go do practice and not play competitively against other players? Come on, we're talking about practice. Practice? Practice. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they have they have a, a practice range. It, it enables you, before you even jump into multiplayer, to try all the vehicles, to try everything and get used to what you're doing before you go out and competitively play. That's actually something that they added on to the multiplayer part of it. It's the practice range. It's pretty but cool. You know what's really good for getting practice is playing through a good story. A good story. And you know what? I agree. You know, the story on Battlefield isn't to par right now. I mean, they fell short. They made some exciting scenes and tried to put a little too much emotion into the single player. But it's a multiplayer-driven game. That's what everyone wants to do is compete. And I mean, can you fit 64 players on the map? What Can Call of Duty fit 64 players on a next-gen console? But do you really want that many players? Do you want to shoot someone and then get shot from the back right there? Well, that, hence, hence the large maps. Hence the large maps, but also that happens in Call of Duty all the time, too. It does, but you have less chance of five people being behind you and you're going after one person. It's also kind of nice in Battlefield is because it's a team-based team game. And that is so team-based, you don't have Lone Rangers running around and just splitting off, not communicating. You can't do that in, in Battlefield. So Call of Duty picks up a controller and wants to go and play Battlefield, and they're a Call of Duty player, they're going to be a Lone Ranger and run around, and they're going to die over and over and over. A Battlefield player is more of a strategic player and likes to join up with their team and get kills the right way. Well, it depends on the player, most of all, for that. I have... Tons of friends on my friends list that I play Call of Duty with, and it is strategic at that point. It's just when you jump into a match, like you may do with Call of Duty, and just feel like you're a Lone Ranger or a Call of Duty player goes and tries Battlefield, they don't have that arsenal of friends to play with. That They don't necessarily have that friend list to go play because they're so used to Call of Duty. Most of the games that I've played, they are actually jump me into a squad that has a mic, and I'm able to talk to a random person that is willing to team up and get the wins and do that strategic play. I haven't had a time where I was running around by myself. And you can also communicate if you don't have a mic with the actual actions. You can choose get into the vehicle and that sort of thing. And in my video, there's actually me, I'm the bomb runner, and a helicopter comes down and tells me to get in the vehicle by using one of those actions. So there's a lot more um, team play basis compared to Call of Duty. We're not running around trying to shoot and collect tags or anything like that. We're actually strategically trying to make that kill and go take over the next conquest point. But to the point of collecting tags like you do in Call of Duty for uh, Kill Confirm, it is something that makes it a lot more fast-paced of a game. You don't have as many people sitting around in corners because there is that objective to run out in the middle of the field and get the tag. Because if you kill, you're just killing people not collecting what's there for you to get, then you're just not going to win. Yeah, but let alone, there's going to be campers in every first-person shooter that we've all played. There's campers in every first-person shooter. So you can't necessarily say that, you know, Call of Duty players are just running around because I've been camp killed yeah. several times in Call of Duty yeah. and in Battlefield. But it just, they try, and I feel Infinity Ward and Treyarch have really tried to meet that demand by the players of eliminating that aspect of people just sitting there in a corner. You run through and they're just sitting there waiting for you. Right. I mean, I like the other things that Battlefield has added into it too. They've added weather into Battlefield where it actually distracts the other players and, you know, you have a typhoon blowing through and it's pretty impressive. And then you can take out buildings. So if someone's going to go ahead and camp in a building, you can go ahead and take a tank and destroy that building, and hopefully it crushes the heck out of you, the other team that's sniping you and camping. So you've got a little bit extra 
abilities to take out your enemies in that way. And with Call of Duty, you can camp in a building and they're not going to get hurt if they're hiding in the right spot. Unless you just track them down and shoot them down. That's Which true. Is something I definitely do. Right, right. So. so, okay, so what I'm getting from this is we have Battlefield 4, it's large maps, it's uh, more tactical, more, I don't want to, you know, say skill based, but it's more of a. Uh, more of a, you know, where you think about your actions before you just go out and run and do them. Whereas Call of Duty has smaller maps where they're forcing you to run around and they're forcing you to make those kills. Um, so from the aspect of a Call of Duty player playing Battlefield 4 and a Battlefield 4 player playing Call of Duty, you're going to have those conflicts. But is there anything that you guys like about Battlefield 4 and about Call of Duty? Um. Call of Duty, I mean, they polished it pretty well. I mean, it, it looks, when I saw the gameplay, it looks a little bit more polished than what the textures are on Battlefield 4. Um, there's, they have that new extinction mode, which was pretty cool. You I don't like, have to like everything. I'm just, <laughs> I just asked, if, is there anything in the game well, that you like? Those are the things that kind of, that I would probably try modes. to play. Yeah, yeah, different modes that they have, you know. The extinction mode actually was like, oh, that's kind of similar to like Gears of War. Yeah. And that's pretty cool because, you know, playing the Horde matches in Gears of War have lasted a long time. So. And I guess one <clears throat> thing that I do like that I kind of talked about earlier that I dislike at the same time is I do like the vehicles, but they're just ridiculously hard to control at times. And um, I know Call of Duty has had features like that, like you can control a helicopter after you get a kill streak, but... It's not like you can go and jump into them, but it is a nice feature if it were a little easier to control. All right, so now I'm going to break off and then, uh, I'm going to ask individual questions. First, this goes to Prodigy. Knowing we've heard before that you you said that Battlefield 4's campaign is lacking immensely, um, do you really think that it's worth or justify worth spending $60? just for a multiplayer game? I, I think uh, most of us fans for Battlefield would actually pay the $60 just for multiplayer, um, but they need to add more to it for us to pay that money. I mean, if it was just strictly right now, $60 for Battlefield 4 just the multiplayer, I think basically that's what we're paying for now. But to make it more justifiable, they need to add in more of character customizations, that sort of thing. Maybe add in a new class, like a Spec Ops class, um, which is you could unlock later on as you're playing through the multiplayer, that sort of thing. So I think we would pay for that if they justified it with some newer options that we could do that we can't do as of right now. All right. And Mark, here's your question. How do you respond to critics saying that, that COD is basically the same game that it's been um, it just has uh, a new uh, paint job on it. My response to that is um, Call of Duty does, Infinity Ward and uh, Treyarch do try to add new things. It may be minimal, it may not be very much that they add, they keep generally the same thing, but um, they start out with Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, and that was a big leap in the first person shooter franchise, and they did an amazing job, and I guess all I have to say is if it's not broken, don't fix it. You still have a fan base. You don't want to go and change a, a game drastically to the point of where a game a gamer that's been playing this game for eight years uh, has to completely redo the way that they play the game, and then they just lose interest because it's not the same. The things that they like may be completely gone, um, and just starting over from scratch. Cool. So any final thoughts on these two games? Do you guys have anything else you want to say to uh, kind of justify anything? For uh, <laughs> I believe uh, Call of Duty puts more of an effort into other modes as opposed to just playing multiplayer the whole time. So you get more than just paying $60 for a multiplayer game. You have the story, which their stories usually are very in-depth and very good stories. Um... They also always, they generally have another mode. Modern Warfare series, they had um, Spec Ops, which is like survival mode and all that. Uh, Black Ops, they have the zombie mode. 
And with the new uh, ghosts, they have extinction where you're fighting off aliens. So I actually felt that was like a combination between the Horde mode in Gears of War and zombies in Black Ops. And I thought that was a really valiant effort for them to go forward and to add all these new modes and try these things out. So you're not just trying to appeal to multiplayer gamers. You have other modes that other people may want to play. And I mean, with, with Battlefield, um, they've added two new multiplayer modes. Um, one is Diffuse. It's kind of similar to play this Counter-Strike. It, it's a great game, man. You, you should totally pick it up and play it. That's what I say. I say you should give it a chance. But I think Battlefield players just like to show off their skills and show how skill-based they are when they're playing a first-person shooter. Other than getting upset with the multiplayer in Call of Duty and throwing your controller on the ground, they say... Well, tough it out and let's practice and keep playing and instead of going out and hiding with your friends over playing Extinction or, you know, playing the solo campaign and stuff because it's a great story. This is a competitive world nowadays in multiplayer games, and that's where it should stay, in the competitive online multiplayer game. But sometimes you don't want to always be competitive. Sometimes you just want to have fun, play a mode like Extinction or Zombies, not have that constant frustration of the enemy just constantly there. You just want to have fun, enjoy a nice story from time to time, play a new mode, try something different instead of just buying a game for a multiplayer experience that you're not going to get any other experience with that game. But I don't think most of us uh, first-person shooters are going to go out and say, let's go and play the fantasy story that I want to play. They want to go and kick somebody's ass over online is what they want to do. They want to go show their skills and talk some crap. That's the whole fun part of it. Uh, we won't pick a winner. We'll let you decide. Objective Alpha has been neutralized.